Hi guys, it's Nami with EOC, and today we're going to be going over one of the Algebra 2 concepts. It's 1.2, writing and solving number sentences. So, number sentences are mathematically known as equations, and the exact definition of an equation is a sentence that involves numerical quantities that can often be written in symbols of algebra as an equation. Now, I get that the definition is pretty confusing, so let's quickly give an example. Um, so, one of the, the statements specifically states that the equation is supposed to be three less than twice a number is 15. So let's quickly look at some keywords. First we have less than, we also have is, and then let's also keep in mind that twice. So because of that word is, we automatically know that this equation is going to equal 15. Now let's quickly reread the first part of this equation or the statement, it's three less than twice a number. So the way that I'm gonna decode that into algebraic terms is two X minus three, and that equals 15. So if I were to read this exact algebraic equation out loud, I should also be able to reference back to the statement and they should be the exact same. Now getting into some of the properties of equality, we have four main ones. The first one is the addition property of equality. If equals are added to equals, the sums are equal. The subtraction property of equality says that if equals are subtracted from equals, the difference is equal. Now the multiplication and division properties state that if equals are multiplied by equals, the products are equal. That's for the multiplication property. And the division property specifically states that if equals are divided by non-zero equals, the quotients are equal equal. Now this is the moment where we're going to reference our equation above. It's 2x minus 3 equals 15. So we're going to be implementing these properties of equality in order to figure out what the value of x is. And this is just a quick refresher from Algebra 1. So first off, let's start off with adding 3 to both sides because we have to implement the property of equality, the addition property of equality, um, or the subtraction property of equality in this statement is actually more applicable. Um, so what we should be getting after adding 3 to both sides is 2x equals 18. Now we're going to be implementing the division property of equality because we know that 2x equals 18. We're going to divide both sides by 2 and we're going to get that x equals 9. Okay, so now let's delve into our first example, which is example one, and let's read it out loud. Let angle A be an angle such that the complement of angle A is six more than twice the measure of angle A. Find the measure of angle A and its complement. So let's decode this. First off, we know that both of the angles added together is going to be equal to 90 degrees because it's A and it's complement, meaning that it's a complementary angle. Also, let's define our variables. The way that we're going to be defining our variable is x equals the measure of, or I don't have to write it like that, I can simplify it, the measure of angle A. I get that this equation is, or this example is pretty confusing, so let me quickly draw it out. First off, we have this right angle over here, and it's partitioned into two different sections, but these sections obviously are equal according to the example. So this is going to be equal to 90 degrees as a whole. It's partitioned into these two sections. One is going to be defined as x. The other top section is going to be defined by whatever this statement over here is stating. So it's the complement of angle A is six more than twice the measure of angle A. And that means that it's equal to 2x plus six. Okay, so referencing back to this image in the corner or to the side, um, and also the whatever these two angles are equal to, now we're gonna create an equation. The equation is gonna be x plus 2x plus six equals 90. And now we can solve for what x is. It's pretty simple. Um, you isolate your variable and then you get exactly what x is. So let's quickly isolate our variable. We're going to subtract 6 from both sides. It's going to be 80, equal to 84. And then also these two are going to be simplified to 3x instead. So it's going to be 3x equals 84. Um, now I'm going to divide both sides by 3 and then I get that 80 or x is equal to 28.
Now, I know that x equals 28, so now I know that the measure of angle A is equal to 28, but now I have to figure out how much its complement is. Um, so the way I'm going to be doing that is by implementing or putting back the value of x into this side equation over here, the 2x plus 6. That's exactly how much the complement is measured to. So it's going to be 2 times 28 plus 6 equals the measure of, oh, that's a weird way to put it. Actually, let's just figure out what it equals. So it's going to be 2 times 28. I know that that's 56, and then I'm going to add 6 to that. So 56 plus 6 equals 62. And the way that we can check if this is correct or not, we can first off add 62 plus 28 together. Um, that should be equal to 90 degrees, and also... Um, by implementing it into this side equation over here, we automatically know that it's right. So I'm going to write down our answer. It's first off, the measure of angle A equals 28, and the complement I spelled that wrong. Of the measurement of angle A equals 62 degrees. Okay, congrats. You finally finished your first example of number sentences. So let's jump into our second example. We have to find the solution of the following equation. The absolute value of 6x minus 3 equals 15. So the absolute value is defining how many spaces away you are from zero on the numerical or the number line. Um, and that's equal to 15. So that means that we have to account for both positive 15 and negative 15, which means that <clears throat> now we have to write two separate e equations. One is going to be 6x minus 3 equals 15 and 6x minus 3 equals negative 15. And what creating two different equations did was that it removed the absolute value symbol and made it a little bit less confusing. So now let's isolate our variables again. For one side, we're going to be doing 6x, and we're going to be adding 3 to both sides. Um, add 3, add 3 equals 18, and then we're going to divide both sides by 6x equals 3. Now we're going to do the same thing for the other side. We're going to add 3 to both sides again. This equals negative 12 instead of 18 because 15 is negative in this scenario. And then we're going to divide both sides by 6, and x equals negative 2. Now, in order to check that both of your answers are correct, you have to implement them back into this equation up here. So let's try it out. We got 6 times 3 minus 3 equals 15. Um, and the other one is going to be 6 times 2 minus 3 equals negative 15. So to solve this, we're going to get 18 minus 3 equals 15, and it does equal 15. 15 equals 15. And then the other one is going to be... Oh, I forgot my negative symbol. That's okay. I'll add it right now. It's going to be negative 12 minus 3 equals negative 15. Negative 15 equals negative 15. And that's how you know you got the right answer. Now, the way that we're going to write our answer is not like this. We're going to write it in domain formula. So it's going to be 3 comma negative 2. So another number sentence is an inequality, and what we use an inequality is to find a solution set. Um, we use a method similar to those that we use to solve equations, um, but we need the following two properties of an inequality. Um, so the first property is an addition and subtraction property of equality. If equals are added to or subtracted from unequals, the sum or difference are unequal in the same order. And then there's also the multiplication and division property of inequalities. If unequals are multiplied or divided by positive equals, the product or quotients are unequal in the same order. If unequals are multiplied or divided by negative equals, the products or quotients are unequal in the opposite order. Now I get the that's a little bit confusing, so this is why we're going to dive into example three. 
Okay, so example three states that find all positive integers that are solutions of the inequality 4n plus 7 is less than 27. So let's quickly rewrite that. It's 4n plus 7 is less than 27. So we're going to solve this the same way that we solve for equations, as I stated above. Um, this doesn't necessarily have any um, negative coefficients, so we don't have to switch the equality symbol at all. So we're going to solve this just normally. First, we're going to subtract 7 from both sides. It's going to be, and then we're going to get 4n is less than, it's a little bit confusing, 4n is less than 20. And then we're going to divide 4 from both sides. It's going to be n is less than 5, and that should be your answer. So another example is example four. Polly has $210 in her checking account. After writing a check for tickets to a concert, she has less than $140 in account, in her account, but she is not overdrawn. If each ticket costs $35, how many tickets could she have bought? So we have to come up with an inequality for this exact question. And the question that we have to answer is how many tickets could she have bought? So the inequality that we're going to be writing, um, or actually let's quickly define what our variable is. So we're gonna let X equal the number of tickets bought, which is exactly what we're solving for. And now let's write our inequality. So our inequality is zero is less than or equal to 210 minus 35x, which is less than 140. So 210 was how many adult, how many dollars she has in her checking account. Um, and oh, it should be 35x. Each concert ticket costs $35. Um, and she's less than 140, so that's exactly why it's all of this is equal to less than 140. So now we just have to solve. Um, so first we're going to subtract 210 from both sides, from the 0 and from the 140. Um, and that should leave us with negative 210 is less than or equal to negative 35x, which is... All um, less than negative 70. And now we're going to be dividing all of these sides by negative 35, not just 35. And then we also have to switch around our inequality symbol because we're dividing by a negative. Um, and what you should be getting is 6 is greater than or equal to x, which is greater than 2. So that means that we fall under this bracket and the way that we're going to write our answer is that Polly bought more than two tickets but at most six so that means that she could have bought three four five or six tickets so that goes under this domain it's three four five or six those are all of the amounts of tickets that she could have bought and that example pretty much concludes our lesson. Congratulations, now you know how to write and solve number sentences, both equations and inequalities.